Thank you, uh, Chair, and thank you, members. I'm State Representative Mary Kunish Podin, and I'm here today to um, present legislation around creating a task force to study Minnesota's missing and murdered Indigenous women. We want to be able to give them an opportunity to be heard and to ask for uh, recognition and then to ask for help in finding ways to end this whole tragic situation. So this creates a task force to address the violence against Indigenous women and it defines the standards and requirements for this task force. We are also um, asking them to recommend appropriate measures to address the violence and assist the victims and their families. July 2005, um, my younger sister was arrested. They released her from the jail and she never made it back to Minneapolis. They basically told me, um, I have more important things to do. I have children to find, call me when she returns home. Oh, I just wish that whoever's out there knows where she is, if they would bring her back, let her call, talk, or send something to let us know that she's okay, wherever she is. We're waiting for her. I was raped for the first time when I was nine by the boyfriend of my foster mother at the time. When I was 12, I witnessed my grandmother get murdered in front of me. I watched her attacker go after my mother and after me. I fought for my life against a grown woman. I have the scars on my hands today. When I was 20, I was kidnapped. I was taken over 60 miles away from my home. I was held and I was raped. I got away though. These are not the only instances of violence that I have to share. And I want to highlight that my story is not rare. I implore you, please, our community deserves healing. These women deserve justice. Thank you. The untold number of Native American women have vanished or worse, been killed. It's been a decades-long struggle to know just how many. 84% of Native American females will experience violence. That's according to the CDC. And it's likely that number is actually underreported because there has not been a reliable database for tracking until now. The formation of a historic new task force will improve that. She's heard from other survivors whose cases got lost in a confusing web of jurisdictional conflict between tribal, federal, and local police. The kind of incidents that put Minnesota on a top 10 list of states with the highest number of unsolved murders or disappearances. Members, we are here because we're problem solvers. We are here to solve the problems in health care and in education, agriculture, transportation. We're here to ensure that we are taking the very best care of all of the people uh, that live in Minnesota. But unfortunately, for so many of our Native American women, they're working really hard to stay alive by the time they reach their early 30s. Nobody knows how many go missing across the nation or in Minnesota. We don't know how many are dead. This is a real historic endemic, and it is directly linked to a confusing jurisdictional maze, lack of resources, and unfortunately, indifference in many areas. 
So this bill, House File 70, is the very first step in understanding the significance of our missing and murdered indigenous communities and bringing an end to this really, really, really horrific violence. We don't want any more Native American families to worry and wonder if their loved ones will return home when they walk out the door. So members, I'm asking you to be problem solvers. I'm asking you to join me, and I know many of you had. I'm asking you to vote green. There being 128 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.